Jesus, this is going to be fun. Are you ready, Jesus? You're facing the wrong way, dude. There we go. You got a fucking cobweb on you, scruffy bastard. Oh my god. Are we ready? I'm ready. It is working though. I'm cutting down the nicotine. It's awesome. About the time I give up that shit. My name is Matt. Welcome back to the shop. And today we are talking about. I'm going to be drinking all the way through this. It is fucking steaming hot. It is hotter than a badger's badger. It is. It's the humidity. I fucking hate this country. Oh, any road. Um, we're going to do this, but you have to forgive me. This is going to be a long one. Um, why not? You know what I mean. Like I said, there was that whacking great big... So this is this episode's... Um, I was trying to actually single out what should be said, but it is so fucking good that... I need to read the whole thing. There's nothing I can miss. I might skip one or two bits, but... Uh, it's too good. It's too good to um, just ignore. So... Let me just put this on there so that the camera doesn't freak out. Oh, the other thing I missed as well is this is high velocity porting. High velo velocity, dickhead. Velocity porting. Sometimes I can't spell because I'm looking at it at a weird angle. Great excuse. See that cover up? It's not the fact that I'm a, a buffoon. So, a guy, so this article, so this is the entire page, and this starts off with him saying, uh, Engine Work is the title, it's a guy who sent him an email, it says, Hey Motorman, I'm a racer for the WMRA, Washington and Oregon, USA, racing organisation, I am one of the top competitors in the Northwest, uh, but I've been pl plagued with under horsepower machines. Now this sounds a bit ropey, does this? This doesn't sound like a guy who does racing exactly what he would say. You know, but anyway, I always think that he's cherry picking these emails. I've watched um, Moto Tune competitors such as Alan Schmidt, Dave Cook kick ass down the straights, and quite frankly, I am sick of it. For a 2002 season, I wanted to be able to be competitive down the straights, but not just the, um, not just the corners. I have seen what your motors have done on, out on the track, so there is no question on who I would like to build my motors. I need just a few quick questions and answers. How much does it cost to rebuild a motor? How much does the sh uh, cost to ship the motor? Uh, what kind of frame do you need? Uh, what horsepower are you getting out of the new GSX-R750? If I purchase another bike and have two motors for me, is there a price saving slash information question mark? That was from Mark. And then he states, and this is just fucking gold. <laughs> I'm going to be crying. I've read this twice now. I went through it as quick as possible. And you just stop and have to take a breath and have to go downstairs and, you know, have a, have a fag or something. It's just, it's just brilliant. Thanks for the awesome testimonial for MotoTune. I originally started MotoTune USA website back in late 1999 to promote MotoTune, my engine building business. In the past year, the website has really taken off, and recently I've had over 900 emails from people who wanted me to build their engines. It would take me 30 years to build that many motors. I can't do both anymore, so I've made the decision to quit building engines and do the Auto-Tune USA website full-time. Oh my fucking god, this is amazing. So, because the internet is a fantastic tool, I went digging. And what I found was that Motortune International is registered in Otokota, Watsa, Watsa, whatever the place is called, I cannot say that, um, in Wisconsin. And it was registered in 1999, and you can find out all this information. I found out that he has um, how much money he makes from his advertising. It gives you all that information. It's about $19,000, all this, that, and the other. However, I cannot find a business registration. It doesn't mean there isn't one out there. But I cannot find a um, business registration for a, a motor tune um, garage. I just can't find it. It's just it just doesn't seem to be there. Anyway, when you look further, he gives his name in this comment. It's uh, Pat McGiven, and he goes on about his success and all the rest of it. 
and I actually found the um, race results from a race in, 90, in 1994 and I wrote all this out. Um, in 1994, which I'm sure he probably doesn't realise is still there, and the strange thing was, was that he was, he actually, he is actually down as one of the racers, and he finished 14th, 17th, 19th, and 20th. This is in 1994. It was Grattan Raceway, and it was August the 27th, 28th, 1994, and that's not a massive winning streak. He does later go on to say about stuff like that, so we'll get there. But if you do dig, you can find you can find his address, his phone number, and so on. I'm not going to put them on the screen because that's a cuntish thing to do. But you do dig and you find out that he wasn't winning anything. I don't. There's more about that in a minute, but uh, later on in this. But you know, if he, he he goes on, he goes on. Let's get to that. It says, Power News is promoting both sports and street motorcycle and road racing. We're making it go mainstream. On his business report, it says that he's the managing director, what have you, and that there's only one employee, which is obviously him. So I, so I don't know who he is. I know it's hard to find good engine tuners. A big part of the problem is that there's a lot of misinformation about motorcycle performance in books and magazines, like textbooks. You know, like physics books, like engineering books. There's so much shit out there, it's ridiculous. You know, all these books just telling people rubbish. Even though they've got facts and data and equations and compu you know, computational um, simulations and all this. Yeah, they're all full of shit. The, secret, <laughs> the, secrets we're, we're, the secrets you'll learn here in the Power News newsletters uh, will level the technology playing field. Well, they haven't done yet. And this was written in 2000 and whenever. People from all over the world build to build their bikes that are faster, uh, as fast as Alan Schmitz and David Cooks. Dave Cooks. If you want to do engine work yourself, I recommend finding a mechanic that you can trust and tell them to sign up for Power News. <laughs> if, if you don't want to do the engine work yourself, well, obviously not. He's asking you, you twat. It all just seems a bit weird. And then he says, just go and find what you can trust. You know what you do? You know, I usually go up to mechanics or I usually go up to builders when I need my kitchen doing the same. Oh, I shouldn't be doing this because I don't trust you. you fucking retard. Just, it, it, it's just, most of this is just... It just gets worse. Hey Motorman, awesome site packed with great information. I've got a new GSX-R1000 and I have to admit I'm a little sceptical about the braking procedure, although it does make sense. Well, this guy needs to sort his life out. How can you be sceptical and then it makes sense? That doesn't make sense. What you mean to say is I don't know enough, but some of this seems like it could be plausible, it could be true. The reason why he's sceptical, mate, as well, is because everyone else in the world who knows what they're talking about, like manufacturers, say don't do it. It's just hard to go against the manual after paying $9,000 for it. Being 20 years old, that's a lot of loot. But anyways, and this is my problem. This is my problem with the this fucking knobhead. This is my problem with this article and all the other articles and these dickhead videos where people are talking about stuff they don't understand. The fact of the matter is you've got a, a guy with a brand new GSX-R1000 here. He's only 20 years old, cost him $9,000. The manual is telling one thing, and he's on here, number one, saying that he's on the fence. Number two, he's now about to be led astray. That's the problem. That, and then, here's, here's twat features. Um, Hi, Corey. Thanks for the high rating. It's true, my breaking secrets method is definitely the way to get more power. And best, and best ring seal for your new Suzuki. Straight away. Fucked it. A word of warning. Everything you are going to read on Power News is hard to believe and will tend to make you sceptical. <laughs> oh, shit. You know how you get that? You know how you've got the doctors and you've got your arm and it's fucking minging and hanging off. And then you've got the doctor. What's wrong? He says you've got an infection. You go, hmm... That's hard to believe. That's quite sceptical. I'm quite sceptical about that. 
I always thought it was an ingrown toenail. You know, what the fuck is... He, he's kind of like he's lining up his own bullshit. You are not going to believe what I'm going to tell you. But that's not as in, wow, that's amazing. That's literally, you're not going to believe it. Because even I know it's bullshit. Any road. The way Motortune has been able... I love how he says the way Motortune. Like it's this big race team. This big conglomerate of like 50 engineers. The way Motortune has been able to beat the performance of the factory racing teams. I fucking love this. I just look, he says it an awful lot in this rubbish. And it's just amazing. I'm, I'm beating, I'm beating Suzuki. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't do it. It doesn't mean it's impossible. But with all their money back in engineers, degrees and all sorts hanging out their asses, and the fact that they built the engine in the first place. And you talk about race team, you're not manufacturers. When you build manufacturers, it's mass produced, you know, it's when people do blueprint and stuff like that. It is what it is. It is a man, mass manufactured machine and you can get more out of it. Just look at World Superbike. But when you're talking about being competitive against other teams in your garage, if it has one, uh, any road. Oh, was to do everything different than the others do it. Well, when you do everything different than the others do it, this is like um, swimming. You know, if you curl up into a ball and bomb, that is a different way of swimming. It's so different, in fact, it's not fucking swimming. Um, but just like the Breaking Secrets article, once you understand the ideas, I think that's going to be idea, you fuckwit. You will make... It will make more sense than the cutting-edge information you find in magazines. Cutting-edge, in inverted commas. Um, versus people who make the bike, you know. Please tell all of your riding friends to subscribe to Power News. At the end of the day, he gets money. If you subscribe, it means that you're more likely to come back. And then he can sell it to his advertisers and all the rest of it, that he gets this many people that are coming back on a regular basis and so on. Oh, this is... So, then he, he always, he's always putting in his blurb and shit in between. This is his blurb shit. Motune US fans, this is just one part of an ongoing tech series available for free to Power News subscribers. I'd like to invite you to become a Power News subscriber. Upon signing up, you'll immediately receive the secret links. Secret? <laughs> On the internet. Like all the files, that are, all the files that are in the filing cabinets and vaults and safes at the bottom of the Pentagon. You know, it's all secret because it's online. Uh, with photos and instructions on how to high velocity port your own cylinder head. Here, uh, there are also lots more articles that will give new insights to improving modern high performance. It's improving modern high performance. It's funny when it just says high performance and improving. It's not that they can't be, but not by a fuckwit like this. It's free, just fill in your email and sign up. And the reason why I want your email is so then they can just fucking spam the shit out of you with Viagra pills and fucking God knows what. Any road. So, this is the juicy part. Now he's, now he's started off with his own bragging. It's like if people agree with you, it then fills you with confidence to talk more shit. You know, it's it's great. Let's go for it. <laughs> so now we're getting into it. This is awesome. Uh, misinformation. So, oh no, this is this is one last one. This is great. So this, this is before we kick off. This is a guy who was sent in an email. And I'm going to talk about this in a second, but let me just get through it first. Misinformation. This is what this guy says. It says seven, uh, 756,220 to 1. At the time this article was written in late 2001, when you type the words intake porting into the Alta Vista search engine, you'll find an incredible 756,220 uh, pages relating to this topic. Every one of those pages will every one of those pages will tell you the exact opposite of what I'm teaching you today, and what I'm going to teach you today. The odds are overwhelming against Motorman on this one. That's over. Three quarters of a million against one. So actually, he's... I, I thought this was someone writing this to him. This is what he's written. He's saying that... He's pointing out that three quarters of a million pages versus his one are telling people to do it the opposite of what he's about to tell you. Now, he thinks that makes him stand out like a martyr, and that he's amazing, and that 
there's the system and them are against you. To me, that just screams out. You know, you just want to fucking strangle him. It screams out, you're an idiot. You know what I mean? It's just... That's not including another zillion books, magazines and other tuners. Well, seeing as though you're saying that they're other tuners, that means that they make a business and have a business out of tuning engines. So they're making less power and less rideable and less efficient engines and everyone's just falling for it. Engines are getting worse by all accounts by what you say. Any road, let's get to it. The Honda Hawk experiment. In January of in January of 2000, uh, 1992, Jesus Christ. In January 1992, I first studied the effects of uh, porting on my race bikes and made a huge discovery. I first studied the effects of porting. So basically, you, what, you're fucking around practicing? It works so well, are you ready? It works so well after one summer of working on other people's bikes, I could show up to the local racetrack in August with nose practice and easy race wins. Now I've had a look through these race wins, and if you've got, even on his site, he's got a list of all the, fucking hell, even on his list, even on his site he's got a list of all these names and people that he used to hang around with and ride with in his local, in his local competitions in and around his state. And what the way it works is, is that you generally have their position, so it'll say like seventh, it will then have laps, and it's usually a lot of them out of 25, so it'll say 25, how many laps were completed. It'll then say um, the brand, so it'll say like Honda, it'll say Hon like that. And then it'll say size, so it'll say 600. And then what it has, it has the name of the rider here, has the name of the rider. And then in small letters here, it has who was associated with that, red line. Uh, Suzuki race team or something and all these in a sense hillbilly race teams and all the rest of it which is fine you know this is amateur cup you know these are uh, you know clubman championships and all the rest of it which is fine you know um, you know the, the great fun and all the rest of it so what you do is is if you go onto his site and you press uh, control and F um, then you come up with your find you know your search so you type in his name or you type in motor tune uh, yeah, Moto Tune. Sorry, if you type in Moto Tune or, or his name, you put Pat McGivin in. You can search down the list of every instance of where it's you know listed. And the one with his name on was the best was 14th place. This is in 1994. So he states here in January 1992, I could show up to a local racetrack event in August, so August of 1992, with no practice and easy win races. But when I look in August in 1994, it's 14th place, 14th place, and it's 24 laps out of 25, i.e. he was lapped. He was so good, and he was on a Honda 600, and he starts going on about Yamaha, we'll get to that in a minute. <coughs> but it, it, these these lists, these tables are on his own website. It doesn't make any sense. It's like, and he doesn't highlight them. It's almost like he's like, look, look, these are the guys I hang around with. Don't look into it too much. And people won't look into it too much. They'll just take me for granted. But, um, yeah, there's, there's no correlation to what he's saying. Win races. There is no winning races. And you did uh, the, the, the GTO solo race. 23 laps, finished 20th out of 25 laps on a Honda 600. 20th place. 23 laps out of 25. He was either lapped twice or he just didn't, literally fucking didn't finish the race. It fucking packed up. So he's saying, he's using this to convince you that what he's talking about is real. But where's the results? Even on his own charts and tables on his website that he's pub, that he could fudge. He hasn't even fudged them. <laughs> it makes no sense. Any road. He goes on to say, in da At Daytona in 1993, I was able to test my ideas against the best in America. So it sounds like he's been doing this for a long time now, this high-velocity porting. 
Uh, like every Fast Hawk rider at the time, I had a 700cc 3mm oversize, I think a piston kit, a pipe, I think it literally just means a piece of pipe, and the popular racing cams. My carburetors and everything else inside the engine was stock, except my secret porting trick. <gasps> Tell us more! The competition, question mark, the top racers had their Hawks built by a company called Two Brothers. Which I don't know. I, I tried to find out, uh, uh, you know, racing at Daytona in 1993. If Two Brothers, as, it, as in the guys who make the exhausts, if it actually was them that did this. But like I say, I couldn't find anything that linked the two. Maybe it did. Maybe, maybe people know. Based on their huge success with Hawks, went on to become a semi, uh, semi-factory Honda race team. So like I say, I don't know enough about Two Brothers if any of that's true. What the fuck is that? And our plane guy hasn't turned up. He turned up earlier, really early. He's a bit fucking sharp today. Maybe he wants to get his flying in done. And maybe he thought I wasn't going to record today. <laughs> At first I thought he'd crashed. But, uh, uh, fucking phone. Right. Uh, gridded, this is beautiful. Gridded on the very last row, which he doesn't say why. Did he have mechanical issues or what? Or was his qualifying blank? Was he a wild card? Did he turn up the last minute? I came out of turn one in last place of 43 riders. So it hasn't got that much horsepower that it gets off the line quicker than anyone else. He couldn't beat one person to the first corner. I always freak out on starts. Once the tyres warmed up, I, you know, there's his excuse, fair enough. Once the tyres warmed up, I realised I could easily out-accelerate the two brothers' bikes who were at the front. How did you do that? How did you even see them? As well as everyone else in the race. At one point, without using the draft, I passed 11 of my fellow Hawk riders at once on the fastest part of the banking. Bullshit. Bullshit. 11 riders at once on the fastest part of the banking. I don't... Uh, I don't want to make of that. In the short four lap race, oh it's a four lap race, I passed 38 riders to take fifth place expert in my first time at the track. Well I can't find results for that, even in your tables I can't find results for that, so I'm calling bullshit again, unless someone could, like I say, I've looked, I've, I've fucking looked, you know what I mean? Any road. Since then I've potted about a hundred heads for every major brand and type of four-stroke motorcycle. Don't believe that either. Um, you could have done a hundred heads quite easily for every single type of manufacturer. That's quite easy to do, but you're talking about every person bringing every single bike manufacturer to you. You know, the majority of them are the big five, you know, and... You know, where people bringing you, you know, Husqvarna's and stuff like that. But anyway, well, well, that's that's me just guessing, basically. The result has been um, shattered lap records, countless US road racing championships, and another two in Europe. On the street, I've built a few real sleepers in USA and created a genuine street legend in the Dominican Republic. In the Dominican, do you know who Motorman is? Probably fucking not. You probably, this is probably the first time you've heard of him. I'm fucking doing more for his street cred than anything else. There was no way I could hide the evidence of this porting technique and its amazing results. So I thought for sure that I would be um, only be a matter of months before everyone else caught on. Well, unless they look into the engine, they're not going to know. If it was this incredible wizardry. I was convinced that the advantage of my secret weapon would be over by 2000... Uh, by early 1994. Well, it's weird, actually, because, like I say, I found your race results in two, um, 1994, and the best one you got was 14, 14th place, and you got lapped. So, he then goes on saying, it would be over by early 1994. Well, by August, it pretty much had dropped the pants out of it by the look of it. It'd been exactly 10 years since my, new, since my discovery. You don't discover. You don't discover something. It's not like it was hidden under a rock. 
You know, it's not like I've just found a fucking T-Rex skeleton in our back garden. You don't discover it, you fucking retard. You're the one who's supposedly doing the work. It's been exact attention since, you, since my discovery, and with ev very few exceptions, no one else has got it. That's because it's a fallacy. That's because it's horseshit. That's because you're just fucking making it up. How could that be? The comments five seconds ago, rewind it. <laughs> Motorsports are supposed to be the ult be it's, are so ultra competitive that no one can hold an advantage for long. It's not. It's not supposed to be. That's exactly what happens. That's a fact. I know them don't really, you know, sink in that much for you, but it's a fact. With a vast manpower and financial resources of big racing teams, how could one guy from Wisconsin hold on to all the chips for ten years? One, I haven't seen a fucking race win at all. There's no record of that with any association with you. And number two is, how could one guy from Wisconsin hold on to all the chips for ten years? You haven't. That's the problem. <laughs> and what's he mean by ten years? Unless that's the date of this, you know, has been written. It's just... <sighs> anyway, it made me realise that there were similar situations like this in every endeavour all over the world. Why? Uh, that's why I came up with the motto, Get past the cutting edge. Well, you fucking genius. Tell us more. I'm here to tell you that the cutting edge is artificial. <laughs> what, on a sword? What are you on about, you fucking dickhead? The cutting edge is just a terminology of saying, you know, the, the sharp end of the stick, you fucking fool. Oh, for God's sake. It just, yeah. It, it, it's worth it for the comedy, you must admit. And whatever you do, you can beat the best. Yes, doesn't matter. Whatever. Whatever you do. You can do fucking anything. I can fill my bike with fucking gravel and it'll go faster because if I believe it enough and if I call it not cutting edge and just believe that I have the secret then yeah, fill it with gravel, it'll be fine. No one's unbeatable. No one's unbeatable at anything. This is like a, a, a 12 year old giving a seminar on particle acceleration. Once you truly understand the power of thinking outside the box, he uses this so much in all of his things. You've got to think outside the box. Well, if I was a quack, panda fucking hugging knobhead, I'd say there is no box. You know what I mean? You've got to think outside of the outside of the sphere. You've got to, you know, fucking zen knobhead. <coughs> I've realised that the answer. <coughs> Sorry, it's. I say I can't even drink. I'm getting so excited. <laughs> I've realised that the power, that the, the answer to how easily I was able to protect my secret really relies in understand the understanding of human nature. Well, I hope you understand human nature before you understand anything to do with engineering. The weirdest thing is you go through all these articles and he doesn't tell you anything. There's no numbers. There's no data. He tells you the secrets and never mentions the actual secret. You know, there is no... I'm going to show you now the secret. Um, with just a simple crayon drawing. You know, it, but we'll get to that in a minute. I'm just getting too excited, because I know what's coming up. It's just, when he actually starts to talk about it, it's just fucking amazing. The information I'm going to share with you will certainly change the face of engine performance and technology. Apart from it hasn't. I also sincerely hope that this will inspire you to look deeper into the way that we automatically think without ever actually thinking. Contradictive, absolute nonsense. That's what that is, again. Unintellectual babble. The magical myth of floor bench porting. Here we go. Once upon a time, and he's got a picture of a fairy because he's fucking hilarious. The floor bench is a machine that measures the airflow through the ports by sucking air through like a vacuum cleaner. It doesn't have to be, you can actually put positive pressure I'm not going to get into that. The vacuum gauges on the bench actually measure the resistance to the flow through the ports and the result is converted into CFM. This means how many cubic feet of air will pass through the ports per minute. Well, at least he didn't fuck that one up. Anyone who buys a floor bench and a Dremel tool is qualified to floor bench port heads. No, they are not. The Superflow floor bench owner's manual says that 
For every 1 CFM of increase in intake flow, you'll gain 0.43 horsepower. Well, the floor bench, the super floor floor bench owner's manual is talking shite. Um, but that's marketing wank and they'll basically look at all the statistics they have over a certain time. But yeah, is that's wank. It is wank. You are not guaranteed anything. It's all dependent on the engine, how you are flowing it, so on and so forth. But it is a you know it is a benchmark and all the rest of it. If you want more water to flow through a pipe, just make the pipe bigger. 